Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Welcome to another painting demo. So today I'm going to paint another portrait. This is my colleague and my friend Lauren. She is a lighting artist in my video game studio, and she is also a photographer. She is also a barista at some point of her career, so she knows a lot about coffee. And I told her that one day, if I ever open a real cafe watercolor, I will be hiring her. So this particular portrait is actually quite standard in terms of the lighting and the pose. It's a very standard quarter view of the head. She also has some nice structure on her face, so it should be fairly easy to work with. So just like any other portrait painting I have painted, I start with a drawing. And as you can see right now, even though I draw very faintly, you can still kind of see the structure of the face. I believe to paint a believable portrait and a three-dimensional looking portrait, you need to understand the structure of the face. So while I might not always get the likeness of the person down, it's still very important to at least have a nice solid structure of the head and the face just so that it can look three-dimensional and when I start to paint the lighting and everything will look convincing. So while I was doing the drawing, I first tried to do a very loose structural drawing and later on, like right now, I am actually erasing some of the construction line and start to draw a little bit more detail and make a little bit better marks when it comes to the placement and the shape and size of the features. But you need to understand the structure first because when I start painting the light and the shadow, the structure is going to play a big part because by understanding the structure of the face and understanding the direction of the lighting, you will be able to know which plane is getting lit and which plane is not getting lit and is in the shadow. So you can paint with a full understanding of the form instead of just trying to simply copy what you see. So I'm wrapping up with the line drawing. It is a sort of a tedious process, but it's very, very important. So when you're doing a portrait, always spend a little bit more time to get the drawing correctly. So I erase the construction lines underneath. So only the simple line drawing is remained, but I have a good idea where the features and the placement is. So here comes the first wash. The first wash is just the color of the light and I usually like to start from the nose make it an extra warm and work it out from there and the reason I would like to make the nose a little bit warmer and even a little bit darker is because it will project so even right now I didn't paint any other structure and the lighting just by looking at it you can already see the nose is popping out from the page very important is that the first wash you should try to keep it clean you don't want any hard edges just yet so make sure you have a nice clean first wash this is why i don't try to leave any highlight because i don't want to slow down it's way more important to have a clean first wash than leaving out highlight and play with different colors so i decided to work on her clothes right now since i'm waiting for the skin's first wash to dry so what I did is I wet the clothes area a little bit randomly and do some wet on to wet work because I don't want to paint those flower patterns on her clothes very clearly because those are not the focus. So some wet on to wet work, keep them soft, which will be great. Now that the face is dry, it's time for me to paint the feature. So I start with the eye, the upper eyelid, connect that with the iris and have that connect to the plane of the eye socket. Make sure you connect the shape as much as possible. So you need to work with a certain speed. If you work too slow, it's going to dry before you want it to, and you were not able to connect the shape. So as you can see, I start from the upper eyelid, connect to the shape of the eye socket, and I connect that down to 
her nose, the bridge of the nose. Now I'm painting the tip of the nose. I connect everything together into a one single shape. Now the upper eyelid, the iris are still darker, but the shape are connected. So it's going to look a little bit more fluid and a little bit more clean. But the most important thing is that the feature will look like it belongs to the face. I said it many times, one of the biggest problem I see in students' portrait work is that they try to separate rendering the eye, the nose, and the mouth. So all the feature feels like they're separate images, just pasted on a flat face. So that's not something you want to do. Try to think of everything as planes and three-dimensional shapes and try to connect them as you see fit. So here's the cheekbone. And I decided to leave a little bit of hard edge because that will suggest more structures. But I did merge the bottom to the shadow overall shadow shape of the nose and the mouth. Work on the forehead. Get that value in. So already you can start to see there is some dimensionality to the face. But really, there's only two washes right now. So you actually don't really need a lot of details and a lot of work just to make a three-dimensional looking face. All you really need is the right value at the right place to show the structure of the face. Everything else is just supporting these main things. So now that the face is at a good place, I decided to go ahead and paint the hair. So for the hair, I like to play a little bit more with color. So I add some cerulean blue and just start to add more colors to it. Her face is mostly dark, so I find adding a little bit more color variation makes it look a little bit lighter and not as dark and kind of boring, honestly. So by now you can probably tell that I am not a photorealism painter. When I'm doing, no matter it's landscape, scenery, or portrait, I usually want to go a little bit more impressionistic. That being said, I don't want to go fully abstract. I still want to ground it on reality. That's why I always say believable, not realistic, because Believability is different than just photorealism. Believability is that you can believe that I am painting a real person. And that is different from photorealism because photorealism looks like, basically looks like a photograph, but that's not what I'm going for. I don't have the patience and the attention spent to do photorealism details and everything. So I tend to go just a little bit more impressionistic and believability. Now I am painting the third wash. So now it's time to push the dark. So start with the eyebrow. Her eyebrow is really light and that doesn't feel right. So I paint the eyebrow, but I also use this opportunity to connect and add some more dark into the shadow area. So the upper eyelid and the iris, I also add a little bit more dark to it. By the way, I'm using Trakel Synthetic Kalinsky brush. This is probably one of the best Synthetic Kalinsky brush I ever used. It performed very, very well. It holds a very nice fine point and is very snappy. It's perfect for portrait painting. If you're interested, I will do another video just to review the brush. For now, if you're interested, I'll put the link down below. So here I paint the nostril and I connect the shape of the nostril to the shadow on the wing of the nose and add a little bit of philtrum. She also has a little bit of smile lines. But it's very important not to overemphasize on those. So I just paint a shape and then I use a clean damp brush to soften the edge. So rather than painting a line, I paint a shape, which is very, very important. It's another mistake that I see students often make is that they start to painting lines. Now, there are times that the shape is really, really small, that it looks like a line, but 
in reality, lines is two dimensional. So if you paint too many lines in your portrait, your portrait will look flat. So as much as possible, make it into edges and shapes. So I am going to reinforce her jawline and her chin. But I do leave a little bit of the bounce light underneath her jaw. Because what happened is the light is hitting her chest and it's bounced back underneath her chin. So she's getting this underlit bounce light on her chin. So I need to paint her hairline. What I did is I pre-wet the paper and then I paint wet onto wet so you got this soft edge that transition from her hair to her head, to her face. So that her hair won't look like a cutout. We want a little bit of connection and transition. Adding just a little bit more dark on her side plane of her face. Reinforce a little bit of the structure. Like I said, everything you do should try to support the overall structure of the face to make it look more dimensional. So now the face is pretty much done, which is great because that's the hardest part and that's the focus of the whole painting. Everything else should be painted a little bit more loosely just to support the face. Adding more darks on her face so that the light on her face can pop out a little bit more. In watercolor, you cannot paint the light back unless you use gouache or something. So the only way to make the light part lighter is to make the surrounding darker. And now I'm going to start painting her shoulder area. Now her shoulder area is definitely darker, so I do an overall wash on that. So her shoulder strap of her tank top become a boundary of some sort so I actually need to paint the dark bring those dark into her chest area a little bit so you won't get like a weird tan area and also I give it a little bit more value for her armpit area wet onto wet I want to make those soft I don't want to have some harsh edges there so she got some tattoos on her shoulder and her upper arms. And in the beginning, I was debating if I should paint those tattoos because I don't want them to take the attention away from the face, which is the more important element of this portrait. But after some thought, I decided to paint them still, at least to hint a little bit of that because that is her, that is part of her. That's what she chose to have and that's become part of her identity. So if I just don't paint those, I feel like I'm doing her a disservice and I'm not really respecting her as a model and as an individual. So I decided to paint it anyways. But I'm not able to capture all of the tattoo graphic and stuff. So I just paint some shapes and hopefully those will be loosely stated. So now I am wrapping up the portrait adding a little bit more shadow on her chest area just to make it a little bit more dimensional and a couple places some touching up here and there and as always when you starting to like your painting is a good time to wrap it up because it's very likely that you can overwork your painting because you start to like it and you want to do more to make it look even better and more likely or not, you're actually going to overwork the painting and that's not going to look good. And I decided to stop working on the portrait. So I am putting some background here and there right next to her. Just so that it won't be just like an empty white there. The left side, I only did a little bit of background because I do like the light feeling of the background so that it feels similar to the photo we got some light bleeding on the left here is the finished painting i hope you like this painting and this demo if you like this video please like and subscribe to my channel i'm eric from coffee watercolor see you next time